I have a video posted of how I stay warm when I'm truck shell camping in cold weather. Well this year I've decided to try out a Chinese diesel heater setup. So I got on Amazon.com and I ordered an all-in-one Chinese diesel heater unit. In this video I'll show you what modifications I had to make to it and how I set it up on my truck shell camper. I just unpacked everything out of the box and so far I'm pleasantly surprised. First of all, there's nothing that seems to be damaged or crushed or anything. The hoses are in good shape. There's no sheet metal damage or nothing's bent, nothing's dented. Everything was shipped in this cardboard box with a piece of styrofoam on each side. And uh, that's it. A lot of the bad reviews on this heater are because of the poor packaging. These things arrived beat all to pieces for a lot of people that purchased these. The other thing I'm happy about is everything seems to be here. Nothing's missing. There's actually an extra piece that wasn't supposed to be here, and that is this vent here. This thing swivels. That was going to cost me 15 bucks to order that. So that's pretty good. You've got your exhaust hose that was included, fresh air intake hose, uh, your vent hose, remote control, uh, the muffler, intake screen filter, miscellaneous clamps and hardware. So far so good. One of the reasons I went with this particular all-in-one unit is because of the controller. You can get this all-in-one unit with different types of controllers this particular one with the uh, blue face I think is probably the latest version and what I like about that is the remote controller that comes with it. This remote controller has a screen on it that's going to give me a lot of useful information without having to come out here and read the controller on the unit itself. I plan on sitting this unit outside of my truck shell quite often so I don't want it to be getting in and out of the truck shell to make adjustments or see where the settings are currently set, it will be nice to be able to get all that information from the remote control. After checking out several reviews on these Chinese diesel heaters, I've pretty much come to the conclusion that none of them come equipped with any kind of a fuel filter, which is an important component to have with these units. This particular one that I have doesn't even have a good fuel line coming off of the fuel reservoir going to the pump. It's got a kink in it already. I don't even know how fuel can flow through there. I'm going to replace this fuel line with some better fuel hose that doesn't kink and also add an inline fuel filter. I stopped at a local lawnmower repair shop down the road and picked up some heavy duty fuel line. This is 3 sixteenths inside diameter it's a, about the same size as what was on there it's, the outside diameter is a lot thicker and this thing is not going to kink at all I'm going to also install this inline fuel filter that they had it fits nicely with the hose and I think I will use hose clamps on the fuel tank fitting and one on the fuel filter fitting I've got the fuel filter installed now. That's what that looks like. It tucks away nice. There's no chance of that kinking. The filter fits super tight on that hose. I don't think I have to worry about that leaking. I did put a clamp on the other end on the tank reservoir and the pump. So I think that's good. One more modification I'm going to make to this before I fire it up is to add some legs on each end to give this thing some extra height and some extra ground clearance. I have to have a fresh air intake hose that hooks to the bottom. It's really flexible. That's not going to be a problem. But this rigid flexible metal exhaust pipe, by the time I bend that into a 90, to clear out from underneath the bottom, I'm going to have to add some extra height on each leg 
for some ground clearance. Since I already had it, I'm going to use this channel that I had laying around. I'm going to use this for the extra height on the legs. I'll just cut two pieces and mount it to each leg to get about an inch and five eighths extra ground clearance. There you go. It's kind of like a four-wheel drive with a lift kit. I'm going to remove about an inch off the end of this exhaust pipe on the straight piece. That way it won't need as much room to make that 90 degree turn underneath the unit. Now that I've cut a piece off the end of this exhaust pipe, I cut an inch or so off the piece that doesn't bend. I left about an inch of the straight pipe, which is about how much I have sticking out here. This is the exhaust port. It's about an inch sticking out. So now I can put the exhaust pipe on there, immediately start the bend, and that way I can come out the side or wherever I route this exhaust pipe I don't have to touch anything this is going to get really hot this way I don't touch the uh, bottom of the unit I don't touch the ground whatever that might be a piece of wood a carpet or whatever I set this thing on it's a lot safer this way not having to ha make contact with anything something I noticed is the end of this exhaust pipe is not the greatest fit around this exhaust port out of the heater. When I slide this up on there, it's not a, the tightest fit. There's a lot of slop in there. So what happens is when I have the hose clamp on there and tighten this hose clamp down after it's on there, it's basically buckling the end of this exhaust pipe so what I've done, I straightened it back out the best I could and that piece that I cut off here earlier I cut a slot out in it and this fits down in here like a bushing or a sleeve and it's just the right amount to take up that slop and now that is a tight fit now when I tighten this hose clamp up, it's going to put even pressure all the way around that exhaust pipe and there's going to be less chance of any leaks, less chance of it vibrating loose, and it's just going to be a, a lot nicer fit. The little controller is barely held on there with a couple pieces of double-sided sticky tape. That's not going to last. But I noticed that the little bracket holder that the controller snaps into has two holes. And there's also some holes back here in this panel. I'm taking a 440 screw that fits in there nice and flush and that threads in at least one of those holes perfectly um, I could drill out another hole I don't think that the other side lines up but I think just one additional screw will help secure this tight enough to where it's not going anywhere That's on there good now. No drilling necessary. One little short 440 screw did it. I plan on using this large battery box that I had previously built to power the heater. The battery box didn't have these external connections, so I purchased these stud terminals from Amazon for around 10 bucks. Mounted these where I could get to them easy and also added another inline 10 amp fuse.
that puts it in prime mode the pump is running so hopefully yep looks like the fuel is already running down through the hose here a lot of air bubbles okay I turned the pump off and I know it's hard to see the screen but I am just going to hit the power button and let's see what happens the exhaust is starting to smoke so it must be lit All right, this thing's kicking into turbo drive now. Oh, it's got some great airflow. There's no smoke at all coming out of the exhaust. So it looks like it's burning nice and clean. Everything seems to be working great on this unit. I'm really pleased so far. Like I said earlier, the packaging was good that it came in. Nothing was damaged. All the parts were there. Um, it seems to have fired up first time trying. I did make a couple few modifications. I think one other modification I might make is to support this exhaust hose on the side of the frame here just to keep it from bouncing around. I don't want any chance of it touching the bottom, anything underneath the heater. That's probably one thing I'll do. But um, it's really quiet. I'm surprised how quiet it is. I really can't hear it. Pumps quiet. The intake doesn't have any noise that I can hear. A uh, little bit of noise on the exhaust. Not bad. So I think once I get this hooked up to my truck shell, I'm not even going to know that it's there. So I'm going to shut this thing down and next thing I need to do is get it installed on the truck shell camper. Ninety nine percent of the time when I go truck shell camping, I always use this plywood panel that I built that takes the place of the tailgate regardless of what kind of weather I'm having. Using this door makes it really easy to get in and out of the back of the truck shell. Plus I have this tailgate to use as a shelf. Now in hot and humid weather, I've got this panel that I will pop out and I will set the AC unit on the back of this tailgate and use it to cool the back of the truck shell. So what I plan on doing in cold weather is to set the diesel heater on the back of the tailgate. I've already got another panel that I cut out. I'm going to pop in here. I'm going to cut a hole in this panel that this vent will fit into and that should line up perfectly with the diesel heater and make this a really quick and easy diesel heater setup. Well, there it is set in place. I'm going to have to paint this panel just so it matches, but it looks like everything lines up pretty close. There might be a small gap in between the two, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. This is way more heater than I need to heat the back of this truck shell. I will post another video of me using this in a cold weather uh, environment, and I'll give it a good test and see what I come up with. I probably will have it on the lowest setting I would think. May I might have to cycle the heater on and off as needed. Another thing I thought I might end up doing if it's just too hot and running me out of the back of this truck shell, I can maybe set the unit on the ground and use this duct work to bring the heat up to the uh, camper shell and that might give the uh, heat some time to cool down a little bit. I'll just have to wait and see how it all turns out. I did reinforce this exhaust pipe like I said I was going to do. Um, it's a lot more stable now. It doesn't bounce around. Put some, uh, some heat wrap on the exhaust just so it wouldn't transfer the heat as bad. I probably will angle this exhaust pipe down towards the ground. I would think if it's setting on the back of the tailgate like that. If I end up setting it on the ground then I suppose the exhaust would be just fine coming out the side just like it is but that about does it like I said I'm going to post another video of me actually using this um, set up at camp but for now that's going to about do it if you like the video please hit the thumbs up button consider subscribing I will see you on the next video thanks for watching